Uh, hello and welcome to um, this video on um, a very important reaction of uh, esters called the Claisian ester condensation. It's called the Claisian ester condensation. And uh, this is the part one of this video and in this video we will be looking at uh, what the reaction is and uh, the mechanism of the reaction. Uh, when ethyl acetate, this is ethyl acetate, when ethyl acetate is treated with sodium ethoxide sodium ethoxide and the solvent is uh, ethanol. Whenever we use an alkoxide as a base or a nucleophile we always use the corresponding conjugate uh, acid as the solvent. So when ethyl acetate reacts with sodium ethoxide and the resulting mixture is acidified we get ethyl beta keto butyrate or you can also call it ethyl 3 oxobutanoate and uh, commonly known as acetoacetic ester so what we get here is um, two molecules of this will combine to form uh, CH3 C double bond O CH CO2 ET now um, <coughs> and this is accompanied by um, C2H5OH. I mean, I'm okay. It's two times. Now, um, this reaction is similar to the aldol condensation involving the nucleophilic attack of a carbon anion on an electron deficient carbonyl carbon, but there are primarily two differences. The first difference is that in the Claisen ester condensation, we're using an ester alpha hydrogens. of esters are less acidic than those of aldehydes and ketones so because of this difference we must use the result of this is we must use a strong base stronger base than hydroxide strong base um, and that's why we use the alkoxide ion instead of uh, hydroxide ion and the second is that um, the difference is that during the aldol condensation there is a nucleophilic addition whereas in Claisen ester condensation there is a nucleophilic substitution so that is another um, important difference between the two mechanisms now uh, let's see the mechanism step one we are looking at the mechanism of Claisen ester now the mechanism step one uh, we have the ester with the alpha hydrogen and we treat this with the ethoxide we try always use the same alkoxide as the alkoxide uh, of uh, this particular part of the ester so a reversible step this picks up the alpha hydrogen and you get the carbon anion this is the carbon anion and this carbon anion is resonance stabilized and we have the CH2 double bond CO negative OET now um, after this we will be having the step 2 
in which this uh, carbon anion, um, first of all I'm going to write the ester that is so far uh, not which has not reacted with the alkoxide as yet and with this we are going to show you the attack of the carbon anion now even though the alcohol the the um, uh, the enolate ion structure of the uh, carbon ion is more stable I'm still showing the reaction with this uh, since ultimately it is the carbon which is going to attack so um, this attacks here the pi bond shifts to O and what you get is CH3 CO negative OET CH2 C double bond O OET okay so let's move on to step 3 in step 3 I'm going to have uh, CH3 CO negative OET CH2 COOET now this is going to react and this O- is going to come back it's going to remove the alkoxide in the ethoxide in this case and we get the beta keto ester plus the alkoxide and uh, let me ensure all these are reversible steps all these are reversible steps so so far three steps all of them are reversible now what we need to understand here is uh, this H is highly acidic in this case because it is flanked by two withdrawing groups two C double bond O groups on which the negative charge can resonate therefore this is a stronger acid than the alcohol of this alkoxide so this is going to shift a proton so it is a step 4 which is irreversible and when I say irreversible I'm implying that it is very less reversible so this ester now picks up uh, reacts with the alkoxide this is almost irreversible so I'm not showing the reversibility here this picks up the proton and essentially you get uh, CH3 CO CH negative CO OET plus ET OH so it is the irreversible part of the fourth step that pulls the entire mechanism forward now what we need to therefore understand is in this entire process that uh, to um, ensure that this reaction goes on to completion in all the reactants let's go back to the reaction yeah the, all the reactants get converted to the product now look at the mechanism here this is these are the four steps of the mechanism and you notice that uh, in step one alpha hydrogen has been removed second step carbon and attacks third step substitution occurs and in the last step proton transfer happens and that's that that's what makes the for the reaction go completely forward now if you notice this very clearly uh, to ensure that uh, of course later on if you want to get this the, the, the product we have to sort of uh, acidify this so I can show you a step 5 which is perhaps uh, not that very important steps uh, but still if you want to get the beta keto ester um, you protonate this, acidify this, add an acid, HCl or something and uh, you will get the two hydrogens here finally you get the beta keto ester now the most important part here that we need to understand is that if you want the reaction to go to completion which means you're going to reach it till the end of four you should have two hydrogens on the alpha carbon of the ester because the first hydrogen is being lost to create a carbon anion 
and the second hydrogen is lost in step 4 in order to make the reaction go irreversible. So if you want to get a good yield of the product, you must have two hydrogens on the alpha carbon. So two hydrogens on the alpha carbon of the ester is very important to make the reaction go forward. So this is the the uh, reaction as well as the mechanism of Claisen ester condensation. In the next video we're going to look at uh, the other types of Claisen ester condensations and uh, then we're going to look at uh, both uh, intramolecular reactions apart from intermolecular reactions and uh, we'll also see uh, what other forms of uh, Claisen ester condensation we can actually do with examples. Thanks for watching.